I'm Brian. And I'm Bianca. Welcome, Welcome to, to the BI. Classy. So, we originally had bought a smaller pool trailer. It's a 210 GPS from StarCraft. Really nice, really uh, roomy and comfortable trailer. The reason we bought it was because specifically it had a bunch of room up front, a little room, an entire room that was just there for storage. And so, it only sleeps, we wanted a 23 footer, and uh, it only sleeps four. A 23 footer sleeps six but we ended up getting the 210 model because we couldn't find a 23 foot model and we determined we said you know what we're going to try this out and see how it goes make sure it's something that we really enjoy doing before we dive all the way in and we used it quite a bit actually uh we went out a couple different places some of the challenges we faced with that though were every time we hooked it up we had to you know it took quite a bit of time to do well, we, the trailer itself is 23 feet, and then you've got the hitch itself, which is a foot or two in length, and the vehicle we pulled it with is 20 feet, so we're at about 45 feet. Yep. Now, and a sleeping Nissan, four. Nissan 3500 van, which would pull 11,000 pounds, and the trailer is only 6,000 pounds. Yep. And we would end up in a tent, yep. while our two teenagers would end up with a very beautiful glamping trailer. So 45 feet, sleeping four people, um, with us two in a tent outside. Seems. And most of the time with the little, with the little ones, our, our, you know, five and two-year-old would always end up with us. I went and actually looked at larger trucks to pull the trailer with because I was thinking maybe we'll buy a larger trailer. But to get a nice trailer, the kind that I wanted, a nice truck, I was looking at an $88,000 Dodge Ram or yeah, big truck, Ford and a new, F350, 450. And then potentially a fifth wheel, but now we're looking at twice two expenses that just didn't quite make sense for where we were. At the time. So finally, when COVID-19 hit, we were looking to go visit the family in Florida. We couldn't find plane tickets. They were all ridiculously priced, even the ones that they had. And so I said, you know what, let's rent an RV and we'll drive cross country. And so we looked at renting, but that was actually very difficult to do because of the COVID and everything. We spoke with a couple people and they suggested a Class C or even a Class A for several reasons. Number one, safety. Uh, very seldom do you see a Class C on the side of the road flipped over or something. Yeah, it was when we would pull the trailer, Brian always drove. It wasn't that I'm uncomfortable, but I was with 45 feet. It just seemed like not as safe as it could be. Um, so somebody mentioned they have a Class They start with a Class C and then they're at a Class A. So we started our hunt out for a Class C. We pro and conned a few things. For us, we have four children, so we had to look at something that would fit sleeping wise for our kids comfortably. Um, brought us, the first one we looked at was a 20, seven foot. 27 foot uh, Freedom Elite. I remember we looked at a Freedom Elite. Yep. Camping World. Camping World. Um, it was really good salesman there, very, very Yeah, knowledgeable. great, great, great salesman. He actually, he almost had me signing signing our lives away for that, that camper. It was actually pretty good. Then I suggest that we look at something that had bunks in it. Yeah. Something that the, the kids could get in while we were driving down the road. Something that, uh, something a little bit larger so they could use the restroom without having to stop. So we could get something out of the fridge without having to stop. And the, if I remember correctly, the Freedom Elite, you could use most of the trailer when the slides were in, but not real function. It, it was hard. So when we started searching, we wanted something to where you could at least even if we had a pullover for a quick night's sleep, we didn't have to retract if we didn't want, or extend if we didn't want to, we could use the whole trailer as well when it was um, not completely hooked up. So we ended up with a Quantum a Thor, Quantum LF31, which is a bunkhouse. Sleeps 10, yeah. comfortably. 31 feet overall. We ended up getting a 2020. I feel like we got a great deal on it. Great deal. It was an easy buying experience. We I we found the one we liked, and I think we got down to having two. Um, and what 
veered us towards this one, to be honest, was, it sounds crazy, but when you live in somewhere like Las Vegas, was the full body paint. For us, that was something that really kind of steered us towards this 2020 um, instead of the, a used one that we were looking at. So let's talk about some of the pros and the cons. With the trailer, the trailer itself was smaller than the RV, yep. uh, which makes it a little bit easier to store. It's also uh, much higher. There's a much higher ground clearance, easily two feet. Oh yes. So when you're pulling the trailer behind the, the Nissan, you can take it anywhere. You can take it pretty much off road, find a place to park it, and, and you're good to go. Yeah, we did nine miles on a dirt road and it, the trailer handled it as an off-road vehicle, but it was great. You can't do that with the LF31. You have about six to seven inches of clearance with the automatic levelers. Um, and that's a little bit of a drawback. You gotta watch where you're turning, a, watch where you're, how you enter and exit gas stations, anything that has a little bit of a dip. It is a pro and a con. Could be detrimental. It's a con that we're low, but it's a pro with those auto levelers. To be honest, is it is easy. such a great feature. It takes a minute or two of your time to, to be level, set up, and ready, ready for bed. Yeah. The trailer, some more pros about the trailer. You can unhook your vehicle. That's a big plus. Being able to take the van and just go into town or do something, take the kids wherever, yeah. um, having a vehicle with you is a, tr a tremendous. Now in, with the RV, we're always awesome. looking for all-in-one RV spots, which is cool, but at the same time, it's nice to be able to go somewhere and know that we can lock up the, when, the, when we had the trailer, lock it up, take the van and go somewhere, exploring, hiking, camping, having forbid you forget something, run to Walmart, kind of. And we nice. can we can tow a vehicle behind the camper, but that's just going to be detrimental to the fuel, to the gas mileage, and everything. When the two vehicles that we drive um, are not suitable well. for that, They're, we have two vehicles that are just not designed to be towed. One's a Tesla; that. you can't tow it on the ground. You'd have to put it up fully on the trailer, and the other's a front-wheel drive minivan that needs to be lifted. That needs off. to be have the front wheels off. So we're we looking at options for that. We haven't gotten there yet. Um, another pro to the trailer. Um, our design of trailer has a back patio that folds out so it looks like a toy hauler but it's not and there's an additional space but you don't have to tow that additional space so there is a good five to six feet that comes down that gives you a living space that you're not towing um, five or six extra feet which is an I think it was a nice feature of the trailer yep pros to the RV is the bathroom the bathroom 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 there are we, so many pros to the RV. yeah don't have when we traveled we, we did a long trip to florida and having the restroom in the rv especially during covid we didn't have to step outside the trailer for anything or the rv and i really thought that was a big really a big did. pro no you didn't when we stopped for fuel brian and i would wipe we had wipes right by the door you could wipe down the handles we Rub would come else. in and our teenager would remind us to wash our hands for the gazillionth time and we would use hand sanitizer so we didn't have to come in contact with anyone on our complete florida cross country um, we did but not you know safe measures but we didn't have to we didn't want to go inside yeah we stopped at cracker barrels yeah we had two free nights at Cracker Barrel yeah. on the way there. That's another pro I think of the RV is it's just easier to camp, in my opinion. Yeah. Easier to camp at Walmarts and Cracker Barrel and stuff like that. And we're less real estate. So I think 45 feet compared to our 31, we could easily fit on two parking spots where the RV is and it was quite nice. Cracker Barrel in Tyler, Texas is amazing. If anybody is going to be boondocking, there's a Starbucks right next to it, and they are very, very accommodating and nice, and it was great That's for right. that early morning cup of coffee pre-made, and we were on the road in a matter of minutes. So and if you food. are going to stop at a Cracker Barrel, I highly suggest enjoy it. And then have breakfast there yeah. because that's also quite and they nice have too. a lot of it's nice um, to support the businesses and support what you do and we have a lot of activities for our children and a lot of them came from cracker barrel so in some later yes. videos i will show you when you're doing an eight or nine hour drive with children there are certain toys that will want to make you pull your hair out and other ones make you forget you have kids because they are so involved in their toys and cracker barrel has got a really good selection so we're going to have a video where you can kind of see some of these fun toys yeah so pro and fun Okay, so finally, uh, words of advice. I would say if you're in the market for an RV, if you're in the market for a travel trailer, definitely take the time, even if you think that an RV is out of your budget, I wish we'd have just bought the RV to begin with now. We I never really even know. looked. When we went to go buy the travel trailer, we actually went to Camping World, and I think jokingly I may have stepped in, in a class A and was like, hey kids, look at this, haha. -ha. We never really 
took the time to see what we are getting into. We just kind of liked a couple said, features trailer, on this trailer, one. Trailer. Yeah, we're just doing it because we're just going to spend some time with family, and this is we didn't do our homework well enough. Um, and I'm not regretting that we bought the trailer, but I probably would have gone straight to Class C if I would have done a little bit. More I homework. definitely would have. I definitely would have. Yeah. The ease it's, of it. It's so much easier. So many more options. It's so much more comfortable. And quite frankly, the difference it's it's twice the money. But the trailer is two hundred dollars a month. The RV is five hundred and forty dollars a month, which that's a car payment. You know, it's it, it depends on your budget and so forth, but definitely doable. And I would have rather had, I'd rather just have the RV. I, I think RV so too. I think we've and we have children that are kind of range from teenage all the way down to three. So we kind of have a tough crowd. The RV has made it easy for us as a family to travel to spend time. The trailer was a little bit more limiting size wise and um, when you're driving and everyone's in one vehicle, it's really easy to put your headphones on for the teenager. But it seems like when we're in the RV, we get a little bit more interaction, um, having lunch at this exact table and having dinner. And um, it, our, our trailer did not have a table. Everything was done outdoors. And so that's one thing with the RV is yes. when you're shopping for an RV and sometimes the little bit smaller ones, you either get the couch or the table, um, invest in the foot extra or the two feet, whatever it is to get both. It will yeah, really greatly. sit down and plan yeah. out what your needs are before you buy. And another thing, look everywhere. Don't don't go to one dealership and, and focus there. Go to a dealership, get as much information as you can. Go to the next dealership, whether it's two camping worlds or a camping world and a La Mesa yeah. or there. Go to as many places as you can, get as much information as you can from everyone. Because I know we learned a lot just in the just in the hunt for the right RV. Which, you know, we're still, not that I, we want to trade this in or change, um, but there are some features once you spend some time in it that you're gonna yeah. maybe think for for the future purchase or anything, and, and maybe write those down and remember what those are. Uh, six people, one bathroom. You might want to consider the ones that have the bathroom and a half, or <laughs> um, storage is always something you need to think about if you're traveling or you're gonna be in here a lot. Um, creative storage things. Uh, yeah, do your yeah. homework. We're homework, do homework, a video homework. on storage. Yes, we have some great solutions that we've learned from other videos and other Pinterest and things that we've come up with on our own. And if you have friends that have an RV already, ask them what they think about it, what they like about it, the size, the manufacturer. I will tell you, the manufacturer, ours is built by Thor Motor Coach, and it's like buying a house. It's, it's a wonderful motor coach. There are some things that people complain like crazy about it. I'm really happy with the way that the um, motor coach is built there are things i would have liked done a little differently but i'll tell you their technical support has been fantastic yeah uh, you know it's funny which is one of the complaints people kept saying you can't get parts you can't get through to people no problem we have had no issues with that um there were a few things that we've had to reinforce and i think with rvs they try to go light which means they go cheap in some ways and they don't reinforce things so when we bought our RV, the guy jokingly said, remember when you buy an RV, what that means, and I hadn't, I hadn't heard it before, and Brian had, it was um, bring your smile in your toolbox. So just remember, you're gonna have those moments for sure. Things break. Yeah. So maybe a camper's right for you, maybe the RV's right for you, but do your homework first. You don't wanna buy something and then a year later turn around and. Well, want something else and you can you can if that works if you're able to if the market works for you but if you do your homework first fall in love with your camper and get good use out of it, it's probably better but um, you know, sometimes upgrading isn't horrible but your first RV should you want it to fit your needs for sure yep so Bianca and I are not full-time RVers we're yep. part-timers we chose to do this we do it probably two or three times a, a month we try to pick a place go for a long weekend We've done some day um, three trips. Three or four days, day trips as well are really nice. Yeah, we try no matter what, at least every other weekend to do something that involves the RV, whether that be we drive the 45 minutes, we're in Las Vegas up to Mount Charleston for the day, or actually four or five day weekends to yep. go. And there's a lot the of places within three, four hours of here that we can go and have a really nice weekend without breaking the bank and cost and fuel and everything else like that. So. Our kids are 15, 14, 6, and 3. We've got three girls and a boy. And throughout these videos, I'm sure you'll see them and 
hopefully we'll give you guys some tips and ideas about yep. things the, you can do with the kids the as well. older two are usually pretty easy to pacify while we're driving or you know things like that the younger two are not they are not we've got a little shelf of organized toys and things like that for them to keep them busy um i don't think we've ever had the tv on while we drive nope. um, we usually are. We try. The whole point of us being in the RV and out and about is to not be glued to the television or iPads or things like that. Uh, if you have a 10 or 11 hour drive that you're doing our really long hauling, that's a little bit different. But the kids have really enjoyed uh, seeing yeah. cows. I don't know what it is. Our children are obsessed with the cows. They love to see cows, animals. So until the next time, I'm Brian. I'm Bianca. Goodbye from the beehive. <laughs>